Now, there's been a few uh, albums that have been popping up, uh, Unraveling and also Traveling. Yes. I decided to put out not one, but two CDs on the same day. Mm. And one of them you can only get, you, you were only able to get at my live shows. So mm -hmm. I wanted it to be like a treasure hunt. So you'd get Traveling and then come to the live show and pick up Unraveling. Uh -huh. So they each have 11 songs. Right. They're the same songs, but <laughs> I just made the packaging a little different. Nobody yeah. knows till they go home and I've basically stolen an extra 20 bucks from them. <laughs> and you're also doing a cool thing with the shows where you're actually recording the shows and people can uh, buy the shows after the gig. Yeah, people come to the shows and we record them and then print up CDs that night mm. and then give them to them. But actually, we just act like we're recording it and there's nothing on the CD. <laughs> By the time I leave here, I'm never going to come back to any of the same cities again. But it doesn't matter! Yeah, this is the Steve Holtz <laughs> farewell tour of Australia, folks. <laughs> He's never going to be back. <laughs> yeah. I love people chasing me down the street and wanting to beat me up. Hey, come back here! Speaking of beating up, I, I bought a Hawthorne's Haw Hawthorne Hawks hat, mm. a beanie cap in the airport. And so many people want to kick your butt when they see you wearing those colors for Hawthorne. Yeah. So I act like I've been a Hawthorne <laughs> supporter the whole time. And wherever I go, people are just angry at me. And the other night we played in Geelong mm. and a fist fight broke out <laughs> because I was wearing that hat. And I basically started the fight and just walked away and watched it. And I got my little flip video camera and started filming it. Yeah. So don't root for the Hawthorne Hawks. <laughs> I don't know who your footy club is. Uh, well, I'm staying away from that one, that's for sure. Okay. There's been some interesting albums over the years. The Barn. Oh, The that Barn, was, yeah. Was, that was kids album. <clears throat> that's a kids record. What happened was I was in this band called The Rugburns, and we used to play at this place called Kelly's Pub in Old Town in San Diego. People would come in and just get drunk, as drunk as drunk could be, and then they'd end up having unprotected sex with somebody they met in the bar, and then they get the person pregnant. And I noticed all these kids were popping up. <laughs> So I was like, how can I market to these people that can't come to my shows anymore? I'll make a kid's record. I don't even like kids, yeah. but it'll make me money. This is brilliant. Yeah. So I put one up. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> obviously, you know, you haven't become the new Wiggle, but, you know, you're on your way. I am on my way until they start looking at my past uh, discography and they notice other songs I've written, like Hand Job on a Church Bus and stuff. And then... But it's kind of cool because the parents actually like the kid's record. Mm. And I did songs that had subliminal messages like my horn goes beep, beep, beep when I sweep, sweep, sweep. <laughs> so I make it cool for kids to clean the house. Yeah. So parents are, are saying to me, that's so cool because you <laughs> sort of subtly brainwashed our kids into being our servants. Like they're just not our kids anymore. <laughs> they're like butlers and they're sweeping up and they're doing all their homework and everything. So it's got good messages in it for kids. Wow. So I put out the barn. Bit of a psychiatrist uh, in you there. I didn't even know it. Yeah. And the telephone answering machine message album. That's got 56 songs and they're all 45 seconds. And there's also six hidden tracks, as if there wasn't enough already on there. <laughs> and what it was was um, when people would call me, I would just have a song on the answering machine rather than saying, hey, it's Steve, I'm not in right now. Leave a message, brother. Um, instead, it would have a song. And so it's got 56 songs, and they're all 45 seconds. So if you have ADD like I do, it's really easy because if you don't like one of the songs, it's over before you know it. And uh, Yeah. That's a pretty interesting album. And there's a sequel coming out? There is a sequel coming out. The claim to fame for that record is my friend Henry Diltz, who's this photographer who took uh, a lot of famous pictures and a lot of album covers, like The Doors, Morrison Hotel, Jackson Brown, Saturate Before Using, Crosby, Sills, and Nash. He's a really good photographer, and he's done a lot of Neil Young <coughs> album covers. And Gary Burden who is the Neil Young art director who's done every hmm. Neil Young album cover. And uh, Gary Burden had Neil Young as his best man, and Neil was there, and he loves Answering Machine. So he demanded a copy of it. Wow. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. It's nice to know Neil's got the, uh, the album in the collection there. I yeah. hope he's got a few of the other ones as well. I hope so too. Yeah. Because Answering Machine's really lo-fi. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is my outgoing messages.